Ross Feingold is a political risk analyst and former Asia chairperson of Republicans abroad. He joins us now from Taipei. Uh, Ross, we heard Biden take aim at China, talking tough, but at the same time using the word cooperation. How is China likely to react to that? I think we'll see the same uh, reaction from China in the coming hours and days that uh, has been typical uh, of the reaction towards the statements of various Biden administration officials, including the president himself, which is to criticize or to focus on the language that refers to competition, uh, language that refers to the U.S. continuing to have a robust military presence in the Indo-Pacific region. Uh, rather than focus on so much the cooperation side. Uh, so the, the interesting thing with that is uh, a lot of people in the foreign policy community in the United States, especially people who served in the Trump administration, will be critical of this speech and they'll say that the China references were extraordinarily brief and frankly uh, didn't sound very tough and really reiterated things that either the president himself or other officials in his administration have said over the past 100 days. Uh, on the other hand, China will also criticize the speech as being somewhat of a, a repeat of Cold War type of language. So it seems like either way, President Biden can't win. You know, we talked a lot about Trump's policy on China during the Trump presidency. How important is it for Biden um, following the Trump presidency to not appear soft on China? The challenge for President Biden there is the competing constituencies that may have a consensus on China issues, but they're really from different parts of the American uh, political map. So Republicans, uh, as your report said, you know, Biden wants his help, their help on a variety of issues. And that's certainly a pressure point on China issues. A lot of Democrats actually are, are just as much uh, so-called tough on China as Republicans are nowadays, especially when it comes to trade or human rights issues, maybe not so much on the military uh, side of things. And then we have labor unions, which, uh, again, is a constituency that's traditionally uh, voted for the uh, Democratic Party, uh, but on the other hand, also supported a lot of President Trump's uh, tariffs and other actions on trade. So Biden really is caught between these different voices, uh, although they might come from different sides or, or have different motivations within the U.S. political uh, map. Uh, they, they ultimately do want President Biden to maintain many of the policies that President Trump's administration had implemented. All right. Uh, Ross Feingold in Taipei. Ross, thank you.